you've fallen out with a lot of people over the years. And um, I think it's a, I feel very privileged to be your friend. There's an extra level you get to going, no one's better at friendship. Like you're really good at being honest and direct and respectful and you you add a lot of value. I think uh, when I first met you, I was very kind of drawn to that kind of your mind in comedy. You 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 help a lot, but also it, you're very giving of you know lines and ideas and things. But it's also that thing if you go, you're very good at being honest. You're very good at you know it's a I think friendship it comes from a I think it's in a weird way it comes from a bad place. I, mean, eh, I remember yelling at somebody, and I was like, look, I'm not trying to draw blood here and and then i bought i took a beat and i was like you know what i grew up catholic and the truth is i am trying to draw a little bit of blood like real uh righteousness and 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 so that's a downside but i think if, if i apply it correctly it can be helpful to the person yeah so that thing of the the resentment and the being willing to break up with friends is a very unusual thing. Most people, they, they talk, they'll talk about ending relationships, but there's very few people that have talked about it. I thought it might be an interesting bit of stand-up for one of us about ending relationships with friends. We go, you're no longer, you know, I essentially, I suppose I broke up. My father's not dead, but I haven't seen my father in many years and I don't intend to. But that like breaking up emotionally with someone and going, yeah, I don't need that in my life is, yeah, it would, strikes me as quite healthy in a way. They, I know, and I'm on the fence about it. Meaning I like having boundaries. It, the lack of boundaries in my life was really damaging and painful. And then you go to 12 step groups and you learn some boundaries. Now I, 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 and I, I had them and, and I never really administered them until the last couple years. And, and I still don't know if I'm right about it. That's the interesting thing is like, if I, if I say, I don't want to be friends with you anymore, uh, I, it's always after a lot of consideration and a lot of friendship. And if they haven't, I think the, the main element of friendship is reciprocation. Yeah. It's, it's, I go to your party, you come to my party. I call you back within a day. You call me back within a day. It's just, it has to be. Yes, Fair. I, I do feel that thing of like some some friends that you feel like you're chasing and you kind of go, I, do I, sorry, why, what am I doing here? What's, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, I'm an adult. I mean, sometimes if, it, if, if it's not, if it doesn't feel equal, it, you can't go ahead. That's what friendships are. That seems to be the point of friendship. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I, it seems I feel like there's a, I, my theory is I think comedians have career dysmorphia. Oh, we all do. And we think, oh, my career is, because I'm not doing as, or as, you know, yeah. wherever we stand, wherever we are in the hierarchy at the comedy store or the cellar or theaters or how many we're selling or how many nights we're doing at the Beacon, whatever the whatever the metric is, there'll always be someone doing better and someone doing worse and where do you stand? Yeah. But actually, if you step back just for a second and go, well, that's all crazy, you're all making a living telling jokes. This is all great. The, the, it's what I've come to is comparison is the thief of joy, right? Unless you compare down compare down that's what i've been doing recently i just go ah, and then i go but i'm doing yeah. incredibly well but because you're in the you know it's like you watch a marathon and there's like the group of yeah, yeah let's face it kenyans at the front and then they all they're just but it's like dude you guys are dominating relative to the field but yes. you're only looking at the nine people in your pack or whatever i always feel terrible for tennis players how come because the number three player in the world turns up. Any, anywhere he goes, the one and two are there. They yeah. are fucking you guys. Yeah. Like you could have gone anywhere else in the world. I think the great yeah. thing about being a touring comic, especially when you play unusual places. I mean, No I'm, one's there. No one's there. Yeah. No one's there. If you're in, if, if you're in, um, if you're in Reykjavik, no one's been there for months. I know. <laughs> oh, I remember. You're here. Great. David Tell said it was great. He was in Alaska and he was like, it was the great feeling to be the funniest person within a thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think David Tell could say that most nights in New York, but I, he can say it most places in the, any uh, any place in the world. But yeah, he's incredible. He's um, absolutely incredible. That thing of fairness, though, do you think that comes from your childhood and the injustice of growing up the youngest of ten and it's yes. having nothing? I mean, your parents weren't poor, but they, they had so many children. They everyone's the poor world. at yeah. that amount of kids. Yes, I think even Elon Musk is going. 
<laughs> what are we going to do? For I got college eleven, fee? but for, yeah. Uh, you told me that good Elon Musk story about the house. I'm sure you can't repeat it. Oh no, I could repeat that story. Yeah, yeah. where he was renting a house. Tiny, yeah, a, a t- his friend came around. He was holding two babies. Elon Musk is in a small house holding two babies. A tiny house down the road from the factory holding two babies, and the friend knocks on the door and goes, what? "You know, I came to the, you. You live. You live here. Yeah. Didn't own anything. Doesn't own anything anymore. Got rid of all the houses." Yeah. Just because it wasn't getting him closer to where he wanted to be. And he didn't like how expensive houses were. Yeah. There were the interest. It, it, the real estate in Austin had gone up so much that he's like, I'm not fucking paying those prices. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, fine. If you're fine. cheap, you're cheap. Crazy. Uh, it, here's what it is. I believe. Because violence can come from anywhere. Uh, when I'm a kid. Yeah. It all, every time, you know, that like post game thing. I don't know if you relate to it when you're a kid. And you're alone in your room and you're crying and you're just like, oh. mine was always like, this is so unfair. Warn me. Let, me. let me do something horrible, then beat me up instead of, and I, again, I got the least of my family. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's a handful of incidents, but the fear of it is it can come at any time at anyone. Well, also seeing that being exposed to that as a child, you even, you don't really acknowledge, I don't feel, uh, as a trauma, you, you acknowledge when it happened to you. But you don't acknowledge your first memory. Yeah. My first memory is my brother fighting my dad. Yeah. So I do see it as a trauma, uh, but I don't, I think the lingering one is anything bad can happen at any point for no reason. So if I can create a fair environment, then I'm pleased and I can count on behavior and expectations and all that stuff. And so if I don't have that, I hate it and or it's what i didn't like about most of the relationships i was in romantically it's like wait what you can just yell at me for a thing you're making up and you know uh the woman i'm with now pitched like well can you empathize with me for feeling that way and i was like i can't and she was like you're right and that was like the first time i i was like this could this is new and it, this could work forever. Yeah. To me. Yes, um, an, an emotional kind of match. Fairness. Yeah, like an emotional, like, oh, because you brought it up. Like, you can't just hold on to the grievance. If I, pr- if I say things to you that show you that you were wrong, logically, hmm. I have to, you have to agree. Well, I think that thing about your, um, you know, you can't tell me how to feel or, you know, but becomes um, a very tough way to be in the world. Because it's you're not living in other people's worlds; they're living in yours, and that's a very you, difficult to form relationships with that. But I think that's what everyone does. I think you come. I think the ideal relationship is, and we've just found it hmm. at, naturally, is fairness, expectations, uh, reciprocation. But, you know, like, and you. I can remember you. Build... I remember when we first became friends. Went on a long walk. And oh, a couple of long walks in Montreal. And you said to me at the end of it, you said, okay, so we're going to be friends. And uh, when we're in the same city, we're going to have lunch and hang. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's the, that's okay. the, those and are you the gave terms. me a hug and you said goodbye. Yeah. And it was, I'd never had anyone set down the rubric of a friendship <laughs> and how this is going to work. And it went, okay. And that's what we do. When we're in the same city. We hang out and we have lunch and we talk and that, and then we're, sometimes we're in our lives a lot, sometimes not. But it, you know, it really works as a as a thing. Yeah, I think you can ask up front what you believe it will be. Yeah. Or I guess well, like, I, I mean, my theory on happiness is its expectations exceeded. It's like that. Why is why is why are birthdays terrible and New Year's is shitty? It's because the expectation is this is going to be the best night. Can't be met. You yeah. can't meet those expectations. And you go, well, it's just going to be okay. Yeah. It's if you go, fun. okay, I have a question. I don't like parties. Yeah. <laughs> so how are we going to handle this? Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like that's now someone would say like, you're Neil, you're so autistic for saying that, but I'm like, I get my feelings hurt all the time by friendship. So if I say, Hey, can you do this? Yeah. And you go, yeah, okay. Then there's no, then everything we can resolve conflict easily. We can, it just makes everything. And the question is, is that valuable? I don't know. I don't know if I've resolved the conflict with you specifically where you've been wrong i've been wrong a couple of times oh uh, we but, haven't had a thing we haven't had a thing where you've been wrong but that's maybe... but i just talked about not complimenting you enough 
Oh, but I mean, that's <laughs> hardly, I don't think that's a foul. I sent you, uh, for context here, it's in another podcast, but uh, I sent Neil my uh, special and he was very effusive and nice about the jokes, but didn't compliment the direction. I mean, honestly, He had directed it. Honestly, I, got, I was asking you to do me a favor. That's, I'm not looking for praise. I'm saying, you watch it, is it okay? Like I was oh, getting yeah. you to watch it as the slightly the professor of stand up and kind of go, okay, that's good, or that's a bit like that, or, or yeah, that's yeah, too yeah. similar to the bit on the previous yeah. one, whatever the thing would be that you go, sometimes you have a blind spot. And I gave you that. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. It's great. You just go, it's great, is, is kind of enough, but it's that thing of like where that comes from. I know what that means from you. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.